Hi there, this is Jian Jian from Spokane Public Library, and this is part of the series of A Year in the Garden, in which I take you through my own garden to share the trials and tribulations of a year's experience in my own garden for urban homestead programming. And a year of trial, tribulation, and hopefully some triumph. It has been 11 weeks since we started this garden and it surely trial and tribulations live up to its name. Look at here. Having survived an attack of cabbage maggots, leaf miners, predators are coming from all above in the sky from underground as big as something big they can dig this hole or something invisible from under the ground but that I consider it all part of the gardening now I never thought I would play Sherlock Holmes in my own garden but this truly is a case of who done it we built this fence in the hope that uh, it would stop predators big animals such as moose and deer maybe not so much moose when a moose attacks very little can stop it but surely living in the wild country out in the woods this would stop the deers because they are not that motivated so we thought falsely that this fence can protect us from other animals from climbing in we have no dogs no cats who could have dug this hole and what are they after this is very interesting investigations to us. This big hole I could quite understand because last week we have buried some fish heads in this hole, hoping that it would decompose and provide some nutrients to this uh, new grip that we planted. But a week later, it looks like somebody climb up over the fence and discover it. There are no poles around it, so could it be a coyote? But like I said, there are no poles around it. So we deduct that this is a raccoon that can smell the decomposing fish heads. So anyway, chalk it up to experience. That mystery was easy to solve. But then again, last night, same thing happened. And this time, Something truly mystified me. Look at this hole. Apparently, this is from the same animals. But there are no fish carcass that's buried here. Sometimes, in an effort to not waste things and to um, put compost directly into the bed, I would bury things along this row that has been planted so that in the hope that next year it will be fertile enough for me to start planting things on top of the compost that I buried the previous year. But I have not done such a thing on this new bed. Nothing is planted on this bed. So what is this raccoon after? So I scratched my head and scratched my head. I came to this conclusion. It was because we have put down some organic fertilizer that has fish meal in it. And that fish meal, once the raccoon discover the fish smell through that previous night's adventure in this garden, he came and took a look and decided that he quite liked this fish smell. So he dug several holes in this garden in the hope of finding something, but he didn't find anything. And so he left. So who knew? Something leads, one thing leads to another. Sometimes all good intentions do not lead to good result and backfire on you. But that's all part of the gardening. It's a journey of self-discovery at the same time, discovering all those living around you, big and small. Until next time, happy gardening.